Today, we are going to be discussing the top five reasons you are still dizzy with some bonus clips on additional reasons. With that, let's get started with my number one reason that you're still dizzy. The first reason would be polypharmacy, basically being on medication, too much medication that could cause dizziness or have interactions with one another. So for my clients, those who have been on meclizine for too long, something that is an vestibular suppressant. Meclizine, Dremamine, Bonine, if you're taking that on a daily basis, that suppresses the inner ear from even working. So it doesn't get a challenge day to day, therefore it becomes intolerant to any movement. So if you've been on Meclizine two to three times a day for a prolonged period of time, that could be keeping you dizzy, not letting that inner ear strengthen with your day to day activity. Another medication that I see that could suppress the vestibular system from working would be benzodiazepines like clonopin, Ativan, Valium. So those medications are useful as rescue medications, but on a daily basis, they can actually cause a decrease in that vestibular system working and then lead to intolerance of further movement, thus causing dizziness. Other medications to look out for are more than one blood pressure medication and if you're on any antidepressants. You want to ask your doctor to take a look at all of your medications and say, are these having any drug interactions? Especially if you have had those medications prescribed by different physicians. So the number one reason I see people still dizzy is polypharmacy. The second reason you're having dizziness throughout the day are your sleep patterns. Think of sleep as plugging in your cell phone for the day, recharging your batteries. So if you use your cell phone all day long, draining your batteries and you don't plug it in for the next day, you are going to drain your batteries very quickly the next day. And your brain is kind of like a battery. It runs everything that we do. So for sleep hygiene and getting a better sleep, I want you to think about these tips. Don't use electronics an hour before bedtime. That includes trying to sleep with the TV on at night. Use something more like a guided calming app or an audio book versus actually watching TV. Get a routine like having a nice sleepy time tea, a chamomile tea, maybe a bath or a walk that might get you tired. Not physical activity that ramps you up, but just a stroll that kind of makes you feel a little tired. So try to get some kind of routine about an hour before bed that'll actually calm your nervous system down and let you sleep more soundly to recharge your batteries for the next day. The third reason you can have residual dizziness is unstable blood pressure. The blood pressure be can be too high and causing symptoms that way. Maybe you're stressed or anxious about upcoming doctor's appointments or you're not quite sure about why you're dizzy. So it's making your heart race and you're anxious and your blood pressure is elevated. Maybe you're stressed because of this medical situation or the stress it puts on relationships and your blood pressure is elevated. Talk to your doctor about things that you can do to lower that blood pressure, whether that's trying to take a walk, doing guided meditation, or using medication that can keep your blood pressure at a more appropriate level. More appropriate should be in that 120 to 80 mark, a slight bit higher for those that are older, and that could definitely depend on your doctor's recommendation. The alternative is too low of a blood pressure. I actually suffer from this, and a lot of my patients suffer from this, where if you feel lightheaded or see stars or sparkles in your vision, or it kind of goes black, when you sit up out of bed or stand up and you feel just kind of lightheaded, um, if you squat down or bend and then stand up and feel rather lightheaded, you may have too low of blood pressure. And don't make the mistake of taking your blood pressure seated at the doctor's office, being the same thing as having your blood pressure stable when you stand up. Orthostatic hypotension means the blood pressure drops only when you change positions. So if you are not sure if you have orthostatic hypotension or your blood pressure is dropping, ask your doctor to take your blood pressure in laying down, seated, and standing. 
If your blood pressure drops more than 20 points, you may have orthostatic hypotension. So if it goes from 120 to 100 and you're dizzy, you wanna to talk to your doctor about options for that. I'll also link a video up here about how to stop feeling dizzy when you stand in relationship to having low blood pressure. The fourth reason I see people still having residual dizziness is the fear to move, the fear to feel dizziness again. Of course, it is fear provoking. Whenever you move, you've had an experience where you feel uncomfortable, but if you don't use it, you lose it. As long as you're not having active BPPV, active spinning, I want you to take each day in little baby steps. So if something in particular makes you dizzy, say it's looking up. I want you to look up, test it, see if you're dizzy. Slow and controlled, look up again, see if you're dizzy. You're always trying and testing and seeing if you can pick an activity that you can control in a slow manner and not provoke that dizziness. Once you can trust your body in that position or that task again, you're gonna start to learn that you're not always dizzy when you do particular motions. If you think about it and analyze, you might be able to start doing things little by little that your body can tolerate until you can improve your function day over day, pushing a little bit more into what you can tolerate. So if you have been avoiding all movement, kind of walking like a robot and not moving or not bending, you will feel uncomfortable the second you have to do a quick turn to check for a car. The main thing that you can do is in a calm, controlled environment, start to push your boundaries and see what you're capable of. If you can improve your function, you will decrease your dizziness. And the number five reason I see people still having chronic residual dizziness is having a cervicogenic component. There's a lot of conditions where the neck will start to guard up. There's something called the cervical colic reflex. And what it does is stabilize our neck or our head on our spine. So if that vestibular system is broken, this overacts and it kind of keeps us stable because our ear's not reliable. So it keeps us kind of guarded and stable. And that can lead to cervicogenic dizziness. So a lot of people I see start with BPPV or start with migraines um, or start with acoustic neuroma or some kind of other condition and then their neck tenses up and then they get this cervicogenic dizziness, which more is kind of like a pressure in the head. You kind of feel like floaty or your head's in a fishbowl for anywhere from 20 minutes to hours long. You don't have to have pain with this. You can just have neck tightness and feel that more minutes to hours long duration of floaty, my head's in a fishbowl kind of feeling. So if you think that you have cervicogenic dizziness, go ahead and check out this playlist or these videos on cervicogenic dizziness to see if you may have that contributing to your residual dizziness. Let me know which tip you think may be causing your residual dizziness in the comments below. And until I see you next week, stay healthy, stay steady, and stay strong.